We're back from the eclipse, but the sun still takes center stage. We have some fast wind and a solar storm that's been launched that's coming our way, as well as a new region that's rotated into Earth view, and it's already firing flares. Those stories and more in the news this week. You'd think that after the solar eclipse, the sun would just take a breather to go, ah, but it's not. There's a huge coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or so. On top of that, we have a solar storm that was fired from region 2672. It's launched slightly west of us, but it may go completely west of us with this uh, fast wind that may kind of push it off to the side. It could still enhance storm conditions. It's kind of hard to tell. Meanwhile, we have region 2674 that's now rotating into Earth view, and it's already firing off C-class flares and we're watching it to see if it has any M-flare potential. It's a busy week. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see we actually have been a little bit active. We've been below the seafloor, but we've been popping C-class flares pretty regularly. That's because we've had three different regions on the Earth-facing disk that have been pretty active. Now, we haven't seen any M-class flares as of late, but the most recent region, which is region 2674 that's just now coming into Earth view, it popped this mid-C-class flare here just on the 30th, and we're going to be watching it to see whether or not it's going to be become an M-flare player. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see right before the eclipse, we were actually in pretty active conditions. We even bumped up to storm levels for a short while. And personally, I was a little bit concerned that we weren't going to quiet down in time for the eclipse. But then the magic happened. Do you see that little green area right there? It's like God went, shh. And we went to quiet conditions just long enough for the eclipse to happen, and all the scientists and projects like hamsci.org were able to get their science done, and then as soon as it was over, bam, we went back up to active conditions for a while. Now things are beginning to settle down. We are in quiet conditions, but it won't last long because we do have that fast wind with that solar storm, and we could be back up to solar storm conditions here in just a little bit. Switching to your solar storm and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that high-speed wind that should be hitting us here in the next day or so. That should be compounded by that solar storm that's kind of blowing off to our west. At high latitudes, NOAA's giving us a minor storm conditions with maybe about a 30% or more chance for a major storm. At mid-latitudes, we're only looking at minor storm conditions, maybe for the next day or two, and then it should calm back down. We've got about a 5% chance for major major storm at mid-latitudes, so not all that much. This is great news for you aurora photographers who haven't seen aurora in a bit. We actually get a good chance for that. But you amateur radio operators, you may have some issues over the weekend, especially if you're doing some contesting. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we now have three active regions in Earth view that are making C-class flares. So NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance from an M-class flare. This is mainly from region 2674. This may actually up a little bit in the next few days, depending upon what that region does. Now, the nice thing about this is that we've got solar flux levels that are increasing. So we should get better propagation on the bands, even though it probably will be a bit noisy this week. So even though the eclipse is over, the sun is still hard at work. We have that fast wind that's going to be hitting us here in the next day or so. That's going to be compounded by that solar storm that launched slightly to the west of us. This should bring us some decent aurora, so you aurora photographers get your shutter fingers ready. Now, you amateur radio operators, you're having to deal with three active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now that are producing C-class flares. There's not really a chance for radio blackouts at this point, but it's a minor chance, but most likely it's just going to be noisy uh, on the ham bands. The nice thing is that the solar flux is up a bit, so that should give us some decent propagation. Now, you GPS operators, of course, worry a little bit about the dawn dust terminators because that's when you're going to see the biggest problems. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.